Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Now, once a month now we're going to be doing something called Porky's Six of the Best. Now, obviously we do helmets, don't we, once a month now. There's going to be something else that's going to be going on as well. It's even better than helmets. Now, I can't do it without you, the hardcore fans. So what I want you to do, I want you to tweet me, at Corner Porky, your six of the best that you want every month. Now, today is, we're going to do it, we're going to do it uh, a week into the month. So in a month from now, we'll call it, what date is it today? Every eighth of the month. Every eighth of the month, right, we're going to do... A six of the best of eighth of every single month it will come out and it'll just be six people and I'm gonna give you the take on them but let's try to make it fun because how can I explain it uh, the boxing industry right it's pretty it's a pretty serious industry but it's it's also very un unforgiving boxing's an unforgiving sport in other words if you're a boxer, right, and you don't train, you're going to be in for a long night when you get in that ring, you will be found out, so it's very unforgiven. Also, if you're a boxer and you're burning a candle at both ends, it's unforgiven. If you're a boxer and you've got people around you that are, that are not on the ball or not registered managers, Boxing is a very unforgiven sport, so these people will bring you down to their level. So you've got to have a wits, you've got to have your wits about you. We can't all be like Carl Froch, and I hate to hark back onto Carl Froch, but he's a pal of mine, and I know his career from start to finish. I know what he got signing on fees, I know most of what purses he got, and blah de blah. And I do understand. Where, where you were coming from with it, he learned off a lot, a lot of other people from their mistakes. Now, Carl's very regimented with money, with discipline. You can be at his house, as I've said before, having a cup of tea and a slice of cake. If he's got to go do a four o'clock training session, he'll just leave you there and he'll be gone. He were disciplined, he were disciplined. He made up for it in other areas, the things that he lacked. Now, Boxing, like I've just said, very, very unforgiving sport. My advice to a lot of boxers is don't have a manager. Go for a year as, with a manager, then go on your own. Why do you need to get anybody a cut of your money anyway? So don't have a manager. Have a trainer and be loyal to your trainer. If you have your trainer from the beginning, you give him 10% all the way through, even when, you have, when you're at the big times, because he was there from the beginning. See where I'm coming from. But we're going off key here. Right, point I'm trying to make is, and I've jotted a few things down here, so here we go. It's a new concept that we're going to do here, it's called Six of the Best. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because boxing is full of characters, isn't it? And uh, I think boxing gets a bit too serious at times, and it's nice just to have a light-hearted look at it, at, at the different characters in the boxing industry. This is why we're going to call this new concept Six of the Best. Now the helmets gets me a 90 odd percent engagement rate in every single time. Whether you're leaving comments, I mean, pff, comments good or bad, you're still leaving comments, you're interacting. So it's all, it's all good in it, obviously. If you don't leave a comment, if you don't leave a comment at all, I think that's bad because I want to hear what you're, what you're talking about. I want to hear your opinions because it's about the fans in it it's about hardcore fans basically and boxing fans in general i'm trying to turn you haters into fans and you fans into hardcore fans look i have said in past that you need to start going to shows if you want to be classed as a hardcore fan too many people are keyboard warriors they don't even go to shows how many of you people follow my channel but actually don't go to a show You've got to go out, get out of your comfort zone and start going to these shows. Without these small shows existing, there would be no boxing. For example, tonight I'm filming at Mick Wales' gym. 
in, in Mexbury in Doncaster I'm gonna do a few interviews and let them lads there feel special about themselves there'll be there'll be kids there tonight that are probably not gonna go pro there'll be kids there tonight that are, tonight that are gonna get beat the mums and dads will be there it's a big thing for him for somebody like me and I'm nothing special to be going around there with a camera tonight and I'll probably take one at pull-ups here and uh, just give them a bit of PR if it helps mix Jim he's great he's one of my pals but it's an hard, hard sport, but and I don't want to have a dig at these people all the time, but will Michelle Phelps be at this show tonight? No, she won't be. She lives in Manchester, doesn't she, even though she's American. Will she be at an, America, uh, sorry, an amateur show in Manchester tonight? <laughs> no, she won't be. Where Michelle Phelps will be, will be at Billy Joe Saunders, or whoever, you know, Dominic Ingalls. They're only places she likes to go to, aren't they? And Eddie Earns and people like that. Because they do views, don't they? Now, if you don't do views, these people are not interested because they are business orientated. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm business orientated, or I used to be. I'm not anymore. I don't have any business. I don't have anything. I've got no money. I'm poor. I'm as poor as a church mouse. But I love boxing, don't I? So it doesn't really matter to me. As long as I can put food in my fridge, pay my bills and put a fiver in car every now and then. That's all I'm bothered about. Alright, because you, there comes a time in your life where... Well, how much money is, is enough? Gentleman next door one to me. Ten racehorses, houses all over the place. Range Rovers all over the place. But, is he happy? Does money make you happy? Boxing makes me happy, so I put that first. Sometimes I put it before my own family. But, like I've just said to you there, anyone who works in boxing industry, they've got to be crazy to work in boxing industry, and that's why I want to have a look at this, doing this six of the best. So, I've picked a few people out. Uh, people might say I'm crazy, but one thing I do know is that to be, to be a boxer you've got to be crazy anyway to be a trainer you've got to be even crazier because you're not listening to just the boxers problems you're listening to every other boxers problems and the girlfriends problems and the parents problems and you've got a gym and it's a full time job I should have been up at Glyn Rhodes today but I've had that much on but when I go to see Glyn and it's just the same as going to see Mick Whale Chris Medley any of them they're like probation officers and social workers. Glyn Rhodes hasn't been able to keep a relationship with a woman, not because he's not a man, because he's tied to his boxing gym, isn't he? He's got that much on. You know, sometimes he's like that. You know, he has got a lot on. Amateur and pro, it's a full-time job. And these people are all quirky characters and these people are my peers. And they're like heroes to people like me. It used to be big drug dealers and armed robbers, people like that. They used to be people I used to think, well, oh, I'm going to be like him when I get older. And then when you got older, you, you think, well, I, I don't want to be like them because they don't want to be like that anymore. You see where I'm coming from, uh, for example, people who've done that kind of thing and, and been involved in, and gone to prison for big sentences. I admire them people for getting through the jail part of it. Do I admire them for doing what they did when they went to jail? Look, that's, that's, that's uh, a matter of opinion. But anybody who goes to jail, if it's not for doing out dodgy, I mean with kids and women and sex offences, as far as I'm concerned, if they get through that time, Argue him all respecting world because we all have to put food on the table for our families, don't we? And boxing for me is the next best thing, it's surrounded by characters, isn't it? If you've got characters, you can move forward, can't you? In life, or if you worked in a factory, you're going to be going to work looking a bit long in the boat all day, aren't you? You're going to be devastated. But if you're around characters, it's fun, in it? And I'm going to try and make these videos, the six of the best, fun. So, but like I said, boxing, what did Joe Fraser say? It's the only sport where you can get your brain shook, your money took, and your name in the Undertaker's book. But, uh, but like I said, you've got to be crazy to work in boxing. So, I've picked six of these people, right? Six people. You all see them every day on, on your YouTube channels. 
So I've picked six people and this is going to be start of it. I've explained why I'm doing this because these people are all characters in their own right. I may like these people, I may not like these people, I've met all these people and I think they're half alright. You know, obviously they do things that do annoy me and they don't do things that I want them to do and that annoys me as well. But I'm not perfect, am I? But I'm like a critic, aren't I? And I want to give my opinion, but I'm also a piss taker. And I'm going to take the piss out of these people today. It's going to be the opposite end of what they really are. But I'm going to try and mix it up and, uh, and make it fun. So, we're going to start with... We're going to start with Eddie Earn. We're going to start with Eddie Earn, right? He's, he's not the best promoter in the world. He's the worst promoter in the world. And... Um, Eddie, Eddie doesn't care about money, it's about boxing. Eddie loves his fighters. Eddie has his fighters round his house every week for Sunday dinner. He cares for his fighters. All them people that are saying Eddie Hearn don't care about people. For example, Eddie Hearn cares about Dave Allen. Of course he cares about Dave Allen. He put him in with Luis Ortiz. Dave, he cared about Dave a lot. He keeps having Dave on the shows, doesn't he? You know, Dave's got a few quid now, he's happy, in it. But Eddie cares for Dave Allen. I mean, that's why Dave's walking about with them double glazing glasses on. With bad headaches and he's not been very well the last 18 months. That's because Eddie Hearn cares. He cares about his boxers. Eddie does not take money under the table. He doesn't do that. He cares for his boxers, he flies them all first class. And he just loves his boxers. I mean, people who are saying that Eddie Earn doesn't do his best for his boxers, they're crazy. Eddie loves his boxers, doesn't he? And he loves the fans. Eddie loves the fans. That's why the shows are so cheap. And Eddie cares about the fans so much. On all these pay-per-view dates that Eddie's doing, he's doing it for the fans. He wants to give the fans all the best boxing and... 20 quid, whether it's 20 quid or whether they're going to put it up for 25 quid to, to 25 quid in England, that's for fans, in it? Eddie cares for the fans. So all them people who were saying that Eddie don't care for, for, for boxing fans and that he's greedy, it's not true. Eddie Hearn is not greedy. It's not about a pound note for Eddie. It's about you, the fans. All right, it's about you, the fans. Eddie, he do, I mean, people are saying that Eddie Hearn is polluting the environment. And with, with his Rolls Royce that does eight miles at gallon. I mean, Eddie's not polluting the environment. I mean, he's gone green, hasn't he? I don't believe that Eddie Hearn drives a Rolls Royce. And I don't believe that Eddie's a show-off as well. I don't believe these stories that Eddie's got a Rolex for every single day of the week. I don't believe it. I don't believe that he drives a Rolls Royce with a private plate that says EH79, which means the year he's born. I don't believe that. I don't believe that for one minute. I don't believe he's a show-off. I don't believe he has tailor-made suits, that he's had air plugs and his teeth done. I don't believe it. And I think people should leave Eddie Earn alone. Eddie cares for the fans. All right? So let's leave Eddie alone. He's done nothing wrong except do his best for the fans. All right? Now that's the first one done. The second one, Johnny Massive Willie Nelson. Now, I don't believe it about Johnny's Massive Willie. It's not true. He hadn't even got big feet. He's got small feet. Now, he was the greatest ever cruiserweight. He'd beat people like... Uh, David Hay, Evander Holyfield, Alexander Usyk, Johnny Nelson would ice those people without a shadow of a doubt. He had a seven year reign as the WBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World. Seven year! Beating people like Sione, Asipelli, who were 15 and 1 with two draws when Johnny fought him. And he beat Adam the Hitman what what he was 14 and 2 he fought him at the Donny Dome so when you're fighting people like Sugar Sione Aspelli and Adam the Hitman what you are a pound for pound superstar Johnny Nelson he went on one of the greatest ever undefeated r runs that's ever been known in the cruiserweight history in history and as I've just said 
Evander Holyfield, David Hay, and Alexander Usek, they wouldn't be they wouldn't get near Johnny Nelson in a ring. He would ice them and all while dancing to the tune of uh, Eddie Hearn's Eddie Grant's classic, I don't wanna dance. <laughs> you like that one? Well it's true, isn't it? That's just my take on Johnny Nelson. Johnny the Entertainer Nelson, or Johnny Massive Willie Nelson, as he's known as. He's a singer, isn't he, Willie Nelson? But, which brings me to the third one in our list. Spencer Fearless Fearon. Never in the history of boxing as a man being as savage and brutal in a ring as Spencer Fearon was in his pro boxing career. Now he makes Carl the Cobra Frotch look tame. I mean Ezard Charles has got nothing on Spencer Fearless Fearon. If anybody wants to know about savageness and brutality in a boxing ring they need to go and watch Spencer Fearon against Dave the Power Walker. Go and watch that fight. It's one of my greatest ever fights that I've got in my fight collection at home. Now, like I've just said, Spencer is a legend. But speaking about legends, well... What can we say about this next man here? Number four on our list. What can we say? Adam, the Phantom Smith. Now all you people out there who keep calling Adam Smith, Mr. Bean. I don't agree with that. He doesn't look like Mr. Bean. He's got a lifetime of knowledge in the sport of boxing. When I want to hear about people who know about boxing, do you know who I want to listen to? Adam the Phantom Smith. And don't call him Mr Bean, I think that's rude calling him Mr Bean and all them people saying that he, he's like Rumpelstiltskin or that he's got bodies buried under his drive or under patio. I don't believe Adam Smith's capable of that. He went to Eton, did you know? with our Prime Minister Boris Johnson. He also went to Eton with another one of our Prime Ministers, David Cameron and the Chancellor George Osborne. Adam Smith's a well-connected guy, let me tell you. If you want to mess with Adam Smith, you'll be taking on the Mafia. He does not mess about. But I think it's wrong that people call him Mr Bean and could have been, run have been, should have been, baked bean. He's not like that. Adam Smith is a gentleman and he's probably the greatest ever commentator. He's greater than the great Howard Cosell. I mean, how dare anybody take the mickey out of Adam Smith coming out with things like Class the Operator and Rough, Tough, Rugged. Adam Smith is a legend. And like I said, people need to stop calling him Mr Bean. And you know, I, I've done it myself. I don't, I don't mean to call him Mr Bean, but you know, I'm going to refrain myself from calling him Mr Bean from now on because he's a very serious, serious guy, let me tell you. And if you think Dillian White's brother, Dean White, is serious, you haven't seen nothing yet. Adam Smith is a very serious operator, world level operator in violence. The man's a legend in his own household. But moving on to the next one. AJ. Anthony, the big dosser, Joshua. What can we say about him that hasn't already been said? People keep saying that he's got a padded record. He's beat, was it four world champions? He beat the great Charlie Martin in a slug feast for two rounds that could have gone either way. And, uh, you know, it, Charlie Martin came over with a lot of hype and... Uh, Joshua just beat him up and you know he's beat him he's beat people like Eric Molina and Dominic went to the Olympics Brazil you know when you beat in Brazil and Eric the school teacher Molina and then 
you're wheeling out Vladimir Klitschko in his 42nd year, who wasn't tired. All the people that seen Klitschko look tired, it was his 69th fight. He'd only been boxing 21 years as a pro. He had loads left in the tank. A great fighter. You know, he'd, yeah, he lost to Tyson Fury, but Vladimir Klitschko is a fantastic fighter and he's Joshua's best win. You know, and then he went on to beat Joseph Parker. I mean, all them people that are saying Joseph Parker had not beat a, a champion at the time don't understand that Joseph Parker's a legend, legend in New Zealand and, and Anthony Joshua beat him. And a lot of people are starting to say that Anthony Joshua only cares about money because he's fighting in Saudi Arabia. That's not true. Anthony Joshua cares about the fans. He wanted that fight in uh, England, but... He's doing it in Saudi Arabia because he's trying to give Saudi Arabia, Arabia a profile. That's what he's doing. It's not about the money. He's trying to give Saudi, Saudi Arabia a great profile. Because at the moment, Saudi Arabia is known for lobbing people's heads off and torturing gay people and, the, and not serving alcohol and the women walking around looking like post boxers. Anthony Joshua wants to change that and for people that are going to say that he's going out to Saudi just for the money, I don't agree with that. I think it's wrong. I think it's totally and utterly wrong. Joshua's not about the money. He's not about private jets and, and very, very expensive watches that you could buy a house with if you sold. He's not about that or $80,000 chains. No, he's not a freeloader either. Anthony Joshua, he goes out and he buys them Under Armour tracksuits. He doesn't get them given him. He is not about the money. It's AJ. He's a global icon. He's not about money, and as for all them people that are going around saying that Anthony Joshua put a tweet out saying that he wants to be a billionaire and that black people are the superior race and that Robert Mugabe, you know, he's, he's misunderstood, he didn't torture all them villagers. All them people saying that about Anthony Joshua, it's not true. Do you know why? Do you know why? I'll tell you why. His Twitter got hacked. And do you know how I know that? Eddie Hearn said it on IFL. Eddie Hearn said on IFL TV that Anthony Joshua's Twitter got hacked. He got hacked on five different occasions. And I mean, this is the world we live in now with technology, isn't it? So Anthony Joshua, he don't want to be a billionaire. And he's not after money. And he's not going to Saudi just for the money. He's doing it for the fans. The Saudi fans. The ones who don't have to get in an aeroplane to go and watch him. That's why he's doing it. He's doing it for the fans. So, as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing wrong with Anthony Joshua. And like I said, Andy Ruiz may have beat him, but he's giving him another chance to fight him in Saudi. And he'll be back, Anthony Joshua. Don't you worry about that. He's better than Muhammad Ali. He's better than Alary Holmes. He's better than Holyfield, George Foreman, Jack Dempsey, Mike Tyson, Tim Witherspoon, Frank Bruno. He beat Lennox Lewis, Riddick Bow. Anthony Joshua beats every single one of them. Vladimir. He's already beat uh, Vladimir. He beat Vitaly. Joshua beats all them. He's the greatest ever heavyweight. Better than Joe Lewis and Ali put together. Don't you know? It's AJ. It's better than all them. It's better than all them people. So, two. So we've done Eddie Hearn. We've done Joshua. We've done Johnny Nelson. We've done Adam Smith. We've done Spencer Fearon. And I think what we'll do now, we'll finish off with we'll finish off with Coogan Cassius what can we say about Coogan Cassius well let me tell you this right don't you know he's a ledge he's a legend Coogie Bear is a legend a lot of people right say that Coogan Cassius does all these interviews with they say he does all these interviews right with Eddie, with Eddie Earn and that the questions People say, yeah, the questions, they're all wrote out. Not true. I don't believe it for one minute that Coogan would write out all them questions because doesn't he sit next to Eddie on these interviews? Or does he do it behind the camera? I can't remember. I think he sits next to Eddie. 
and 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 he don't he don't uh, go through all them questions. No, no, no. It's just it's just banter. He just let it flow. It's not pre it's not pre arranged. He he, he, he wouldn't do that to fans, would he? No, 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 no. Coogie Bear won't do that to fans and all these people that are saying that Coogan is a view whore is it, I don't agree with it, you know, and that they say that he clickbaits with thumbnails and these fancy titles. I don't believe that he's clickbaiting. I don't believe he does that. I don't I don't believe he does it for one minute. I believe that Coog and I don't I also do you know all them people who've got really expensive software on the computers? I'm talking big businesses, right? Who've got this software. I don't believe for one minute that they go on their software and find out that Coogan just interviews about 25 or 26 people. No, I don't believe it. I believe that Coogan goes all over the world, where Vegas, New York, London, Saudi, he goes to all Europe, Germany, France, everywhere. He goes all over the world for boxing and I believe he does it for fans. I don't believe he does it for money or financial gain or to get views. No, I think he does it for the fans and I think that uh, I think that's why he's doing it. I don't think he just does it to interview the same 26 people. It's like people say that you know, there's other people that copy Coogan and they interview the same people because if they piggyback on Coogie's back, they'll get access to all these people. You know, I don't believe that. I don't believe that Rob Tebbett and Michelle Phelps would do that. I don't believe that for one minute. I believe that they're their own people and they've got their own ideas about boxing should be presented. In fact, I believe that Coogan... I believe people in boxing are frightened of Coogan's questions. I believe that Eddie Hearn, when he has to do an interview with Coogan, I think he's shitting his pants. Because he knows that Coogan's going to put it on him for fans. Coogan's going to do it for fans. He cares about the fans. Coogan doesn't do it for views and money. He does it for fans and he's really doing it to piss Eddie off. Because Eddie fears Coogan. I'm telling you now... Eddie Hearn is frightened of Coogan Cassius's questions because when Coogan gets them tied it up in a knot, he's like Michael Parkinson, isn't he? They're really, really scared of Coogan's questions. He puts it on all of them, doesn't he? I mean, people say that it's a core 26 people that he interviews, the ones that get, you know, the big views and, and that he don't bother about the rest. No, Coogan goes to all amateur shows. On his nights off, he goes to amateur shows. Don't forget, there's only seven nights in a week, and Coogie's there all the time. He cares about novice boxers. I mean, he's always at Dennis's shows, because Dennis has journeymen and novices and, you know, guys that have beat British champ been British champions and they're making comebacks. Coogan's always at Dennis's shows. He doesn't just go to Eddie's, Eddie's shows and Frank's. And MTKs now he goes he goes to he goes to everybody's shows he goes to uh, well I'm sure there is people's shows he goes to does he he goes to up north he goes Wales he goes to all the small old shows Coogan cares about boxing and all them people like I've just said always saying that he only interviews certain people it's wrong it's wrong to say that it's defamation of Coogan Cassius's uh, character. So that's what I think anyway, but there you go, there's six of the best, so I hope you've enjoyed them just as much as I did, you know, jotting the ideas down. Now, if you give me some ideas about who can be your six of the best for the eight, before the 8th of October, send them in to Corner Porky, at Corner Porky on Twitter, and Porky's Corner Facebook, but I don't deal with that. Send them to Twitter or send them to emails because I do deal with the emails. Send the email to porkycorner at mail.com. All lowercase and that's no capitals. So porky corner, not porky's corner. Porkycorner at mail.com. Send me your email. I prefer it if you sent it in an email. And put where you're from as well. Say if your name's John and you're from Leeds, put John from Leeds or Poppy from Wales or Cardiff whatever but send me them in and what I'll do 
I'll get a, we'll add it all up and see who gets most and we'll do a six, six at best for, for 8th for October. Just playing about with it and just, with channel and just try, trying different things, trying to think outside the box. I don't want to be one. So we're just uh, playing about we, we at the moment and trying different things, uh, trying to think outside the box. I've never been one. I've never been one of them people to to copy everybody else. I don't believe in that. Uh, I believe in being my own person. Uh, but what I will say is this: if if you don't like watching the channel, don't watch. Don't watch it. Uh, I'm not forcing anybody to watch it. There is there is people that enjoy watching the channel, so keep your comments positive. Uh, a lot of people who leave negative comments, leave them anyway. But isn't it nice if you can leave a positive one? My grandma always used to say, if you can't say anything positive, why why say it at all? Says me. But then again, I'm the one in the hot seat, aren't I? So I'm the one that's. I'm not trying to lead a revolution. I'm trying to just point out that I think we're being took for mugs in boxing at the moment with a lot of things. Uh, I believe that Eddie Hearn's cashing out. I think he's looking to cash out and get as much money in as he can. Now, people think, oh, you're crazy, Porky, saying that. Well, how am I crazy? Why are you giving pay-per-views to people who are, out, who are making a debut? Wouldn't that be an insult to your own boxers that have not had a pay-per-view? I mean, what do Eddie Hearn's boxers think about... What do they think about him giving pay-per-views to YouTubers? What next? Are we going to have me against Dean White on YouTube on pay-per-view? Is that what we're going to have? What would, what would Eddie's fans think to that? If you put me against Dean White on Sky, what about that? What would, what would Eddie think to that? Hey, and are these people who are having this pay-per-view who are going to earn millions, are they going to fight again in boxing? Well, I'm telling you that they're probably not going to fight again in boxing. That's what's going to happen. And, and would you put KSI or Logan Paul in with a professional fighter? If you did, are you setting a dangerous precedent? I don't know, but like I said... I do these videos and I do them as a piss take and yet I dig people out but when you've got people like Eddie Hearn putting pay-per-views on like that it, it's an insult to boxing fans like myself I love boxing it'll always, it'll, it'll always be in my heart boxing I love boxing that much so when you've got people like I've just said there putting on pay-per-views like that it's an insult to his fighters isn't it really it's an insult to his fighters, that's what I think. So, it's just one of them things, isn't it? But I'm going to dig these people out, aren't I? Because they want to be dug out. Now, you know, Eddie said it's not about money, but come on, we know it is about money, don't we? I've just done a video about Eddie, actually, and it's in this, and it's taking Mickey out of him. Of course it's about money. Of course it's about money. That's why they're going to Saudi Arabia. They want to get as much money as they can because Joshua's been found out now, hasn't he? He's been found out now and there'll be clauses in a lot of contracts that Joshua's got saying if you get beat, this is what happens with your money. If you get beat again, this is what happens with your money. Now, what happens when a fighter gets beat? If a fighter gets dropped four times in a fight and he quits, what does the promoter normally do? Well, I know what the promoter normally does. He looks at things differently. He looks at the picture totally differently to how he would normally look at the picture. He looks at it as if to say, do you know what? 
This is uh, not good, it's bad. So we need to have a backup plan. Now Eddie Hearn's a smart cookie. Very, very smart. In his office, he'll have boards up and each board will tell you what they've got on in different months and what they're doing. And he'll know, he'll be thinking, right, what can they do with Joshua now? All they can do with Joshua now is keep throwing him under buses. He's still going to be a big name, isn't he? But the invincibility is gone. Does he beat Tyson Fury? No. Does he win a round off Tyson Fury? Do you know what? I don't think he does. Does anybody win rounds off Tyson Fury? If you land on him, yeah. Does Joshua punch as hard as Wilder? No. Is he as fast as Wilder? No. Did Tyson get up from Wilder's punch? Yeah. So we'll get up from Joshua's. So I don't see how Tyson Fury can lose against Joshua. So all Eddie's going to do now is put Joshua in massive fights and keep wheeling him out. The invincibility has gone. It's a bit like Mike Tyson. Once Mike Tyson lost against Buster Douglas, the end was near. It means you've climbed the mountain and you're coming down. But Eddie is coming down with Joshua now, but he's going to keep telling you that he's still up here. But really, he's coming down. Plus he's hitting 30. In a couple of weeks, Joshua's 30. Is he next month? Joshua's 30. I think his birthday is the day before mine. He's 30. So he's on the slide. The people that are going to say Joshua isn't on the slide are people at Sky. Adam Smith, Johnny Nelson and his friends. People who want to get on AJ's cards. This is why I like Dave Allen because he tells it straight. He'll dig Joshua out when he needs to be dug out. The downside is that Dave's not going to be able to get on Joshua's cards now, is he? Because he's dug him out. But people who want to get on Joshua's undercard, they're not going to dig him out. O'Hara Davis would love to be on a Joshua undercard. That's why he's going to keep flying flag for Joshua. These people have ulterior motives, mainly money, their livelihood. For example, have you ever listened to the Pound for Pound podcast? with Jake Wood and Spencer Oliver. Have you ever listened to that? What a load of rubbish. What a load of propaganda. That is propaganda. That is sky propaganda. Have you ever listened to it? Has anybody ever listened to the things that these people come out with? Have you ever seen a tweet from Matthew Macklin after, after there's been a fight on, on Frank Warren's show? Is this anybody who's a rival to any of Frank Warren's fighters? Have you ever seen Macklin when he pipes up? Did you see what he said about Yarde? I'm a bit disappointed with Matthew Macklin saying that. Because I've met Matthew Macklin and he's a pretty humble guy, but he's employed by Sky, isn't he? He's going to want the money, baby. Going to want the money. That's what he's going to want. And this is why these people have ulterior motives, don't they? This is why people who I know, personal friends of mine, they're not going to come on this channel, are they? because they're tied to the gravy train. They have an opinion and they'll tell me their opinion. I know what their opinion is. I know. Now, but they're not gonna say it on TV, are they, or in interviews. But I can understand that. And I'm not gonna say what people have said, but I know. And I'm glad that these people confide in me. I know what they're seeing. I see it daily. I see what you, the fans, see. Am I damaging Dennis Hobson saying a lot of things I come out with on the channel? Yeah. Is Dennis bothered? No. He's never going to want for want again in his life, is he? He's alright, isn't he? He just says to me, you do your own thing, we're mates. As long as it doesn't affect his fighters. Now, Dennis has got a small stable, but he's his own man, isn't he? People can ring Dennis up and complain all they want. He's his own man, he'll have a word with me. He'll rein me in if I go too if I go too far, but we live in a democracy, don't we? We live in a democracy. Alright. I try to keep my opinions pretty even based. A lot of people keep emailing me saying I don't slag off Peter Fury. I don't slag off Yuri Fury. What why why am I gonna slag him off then my mates? If you're on about on a personal level, well, I think that Yui Fury is British level now, stroke European level. I thought he were world level, but 
his last performance weren't were it he won against Parker I thought he fought good there but he's going to need that something extra you is going to need something extra and there's plenty of time for Peter to get that out Yui so we're not just going to throw Yui under the bus at the moment 24 year old he's not 25 is he still next week Fraser Clark is he 28 he's still in amateurs in the GB team so Yui's plenty of time ahead of him hasn't he to win a world title will Yui truly win a world title with good matchmaking yes does he beat Wilder at the moment and Joshua no I don't think he does can he down the line of course he can yeah because it's all about timing can he beat Andy Ruiz down the line yeah Andy Ruiz has got six year on Yui five year older than him so let's judge Yui when Yui gets to 29 let's judge Yui Fury in four years time he's got a British title in bag let's judge him in four years all right, we can't judge him yet. He's a kid, isn't he? We're not judging Nathan Gorman, are we? And he's only two years younger than you. So we're not judging Nathan Gorman yet. You don't hear me dig Nathan out, do you? Because he's got time to learn, hasn't he? But I try to keep my comments to the best of my ability without upsetting close personal friends. I have got some friends that do piss me off at times. But... I'll tell them that, I'll tell them that, do you know what I mean, I'll tell them, I'll text Carl Fox, I'll say, I'm a bit disappointed Carl that you won't come on the channel, and he'll not reply to it, but I know it's because he works at Sky, so what can I do about that, there's no I can do is there, there's no, nothing I can do, because I am a bit out there aren't I, because I'm pretty fearless, I'm not really bothered about anybody am I really, don't, oh, what, why should I be, well, I'm going to be frightened, and we're going to be frightened of Sky Sports and Eddie Earn now. Eddie might have a bit of banter with me every now and then in emails. His dad does. And his dad's likeable, but he don't mean to say that I have to like how he goes about business. I could be in a business deal or doing something with Barry Earn and he can talk sense to you. He could be. He could talk sense in another business. In another business to me, and I'd think, you know what, he's a good guy. But if you want to talk boxing with him, his job's to get as much money in it. And sometimes there can be casualties on the way. And boxing's always going to give us scope to have an opinion, in it? So, it's just one of them things. It's an hard sport to be around, in it? And still stay friends with people, in it? It's, look at Chris, Smedley and Dennis. They're both my mates, aren't they? I, want, I hope they sort it out, but might not. But let's hope they do. Clinton and Dan don't speak, do they? Look what they went through. They like that, wasn't they? They don't speak now, and I think that's a shame, isn't it? But, didn't we say that I can't speak to Clinton and I'll say hello? Because I like him. But, there's people I don't like, and who Dan speaks to. And I always think to myself, I wish he wouldn't speak to him, but then again, I think he ain't done that wrong to Dan, has he? So, that's just boxing, isn't it? it Probably people who are my mates at the moment who might fall out down the line and I hope not because I don't like to fall out with people. But I give an opinion, don't take it personally what I say on here. It's only an opinion, a lot of it's for a reaction but don't take it personally if I dig you out on here. It's boxing isn't it? You can come and see me and shake my hand and have a pipe with me. I'm probably one of the best kids you'll ever meet. Ask anybody who knows me. But I look at things differently and like I said I have a problem with people who have ulterior motives for money. I'd rather, I don't know. It's two people have ulterior motives in the boxing industry. They'll want to work with certain people down the line so they won't want to come on my channel. I can understand that. I can see that. But, I don't know. Carl Froch is a multi-millionaire, isn't he? What are they going to do? Sack him at Sky because he's come on Porky's Corner. One of them things, isn't it? It'll still be on my Christmas card list, won't it? I still text him every now and then. You don't mean to say you can't have my somebody because he can't come on your channel. Robin Reed's not come on yet. He ain't got back to me. So it's one of them things, isn't it? You can be mates with people, but coming on Porky's Corner is a different thing, isn't it? Peter Fury's been on channel, and he? he's not bothered, is he? <laughs> 
Some people are just not bothered with it. It's all a load of... It's all a load of crap anyway at the end of the day. And does anybody take any of this serious? No, do people take me serious? The people that matter do, yeah. Yeah, the people that matter do. We're going meetings with fighters and trainers. People take me seriously, yeah. There's a time and a place when to have a joke, isn't there, and when not to have a joke. But the channel's going in the right direction. We're over 2,100 subscribers, aren't we now? Is it 2,100 and... Oh, what? 2,110. Whoa! Whoopee, woo! We're really going for it now, aren't we? But it's all good fun, isn't it? It's all good fun. It's better me, better that I do this in it than uh, than me going out there committing crimes in it. That's not good, is it? I think the only crimes I commit now are speeding in car, aren't they? Which is hard not to, isn't it? But uh, shout out to Gibbo if you're watching. I did it from Farm Shop at Old Edlington. 6.87 seconds, not to 60. So beat that, Gibbo, if you can. In your Audi. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I'm alright. It's the weekend. I'm going to Mick Wales' show tonight, all being well. And that's about it. So, like I said, keep your six of the best coming in. Keep your helmets coming in. Keep supporting the channel. I want everybody to keep supporting the channel. Keep supporting it. I thank you for the support. Uh, keep supporting the channel and. Don't forget to press the like button or the dislike button. Don't make much difference, does it? I like likes though, it tickles me ego, but what upsets me is people who send in emails and comments regarding my kids. Try and keep kids out of it, because it's not good, is it? If I do get one more email regarding my children, right, being or mocked up pictures with them. What I will do, I'll just show it to the kids' mum when I see her. And I know what she'll do with it. She'll go, oh, Bill wants you, and then, oh, then I'll have to be dragged into it and all that. And last thing I don't want to be doing is giving statements out, but keep it clean. Don't involve a man's children. Six year old, my kids are not the twins, boy and a girl. They're not seven while well November, so keep that out of it. And you, you will keep doing it. Come on. Keep that out of it. It's not good, is it? All right. But if you do it again, well, it won't be me that will be dealing with it. I'll, I'll pass it on to her, and she'll go through proper channels. So, all right. So let's keep it clean. All right. Don't mess with a man's children. Uh, I think that's about it, really. Keep your comments coming. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and then you'll get your porky fix straight away. We're going to do a video every single day, seven videos a week. It's all good. Positive, positive, positive stuff. We're heading towards a million views, probably about January. When we get a million views, there's a few things in pipeline with certain people, partners gonna come on board. Uh, so, it's been a long, hard slog, especially since Christmas, since we took it serious, but thanks for watching. All right, I think that's about it. I hope you've enjoyed this. Six of the best. I don't know how I think them up, to be honest. Uh, I don't know how I think them up, but must be that chronic I've been smoking, eh? All right, so peace out. Boom. Pink and black for world title at Crucible. Corner. Don't forget to subscribe to Josh Whale on Twitter. It's at JBoy Outlaw. He's a boxer and I signed him with Dennis and he's going to win a world title so get ready. JBoy Outlaw and Mickey's Athletic. Follow them on Twitter and Facebook. Alright, peace out. Keep on trucking.